some basic. <laughs> I've never had a lisp before. Let's chat about boot and binding compatibility. Hi, my name is Hannah. I'm a gearhead here at Backcountry, and I'm going to talk about ski bindings and what you need to know to get the right pair mounted on your skis. The main concept behind bindings is pretty simple. They keep your boots and you attached to your skis, but they come in many different styles depending on where you intend to ski. Some of the main sources of confusion when shopping for bindings include picking the wrong brake width, overestimating your din, choosing the correct sole standard, and knowing where to mount the bindings on your skis. So let's break it down. Bindings generally fall under three categories. Alpine, touring or tech, and hybrid. Alpine bindings are the most common and traditional style of binding. These are the ones you'll find on most skis at the resort, and your boots are connected to the binding via a lip at the toe and heel. Alpine touring bindings have a mechanism that frees the heel from your binding for while you're skinning up. Touring bindings can be split into three subcategories. Tech bindings use pins to hold your boot in place and are usually only used for backcountry skiing. These are the lightest options out there and your best choice if you only plan on touring a lot this season or want a separate setup from your Alpine kit. Hybrid AT bindings, like the Marker Duke PT or Solomon Shift, use pins in the toe for uphill travel and a traditional toe heel mechanism for skiing down. They're a great option for moving easily between the resort and backcountry. Last, the original hybrid binding is the frame binding. Your boot is connected to a frame that can be unclipped for uphill travel. These are the most affordable option if you're looking for a binding that can move from inbounds to backcountry, but what you save in dollars you pay for in weight during your climb on the skin track. Let's chat about boot and binding compatibility. For your ski binding to safely release, your boot sole needs to be compatible with the binding. Some basic things to remember are that standard Alpine ski boots have a flat sole and are only compatible with standard Alpine bindings. Boots with a grip walk sole have rockered soles that are only compatible with Alpine bindings with an adjustable toe height. Alpine touring boots have a more rockered sole with rubber tread for better off-ski traction and inserts for pins and tech bindings. And last, we have hybrid boots, which usually have grip walk soles, but also include inserts for the pins and tech bindings. Sole standards can get a little confusing, but when in doubt, you can always check the ISO. The quickest way to see if your boots are compatible with your bindings is to check the ISO on each. To break it down, take a look at this graph. Most bindings come with an adjustable DIN. The DIN value is an industry adopted scale of release force settings on ski bindings, which decides how much pressure it takes before you're released from your bindings. This is definitely something you want to happen if you crash, but not if you're waist deep in POW. Trust us, you do not want to spend 30 minutes of your powder day digging for a ski. In order for a ski technician to calculate your recommended DIN, they'll need to know your height, weight, boot sole length, and skier type, one, two, or three. When shopping for bindings, you'll notice there's usually a number in the product title. This refers to the highest DIN that binding can be set at, but it also affects the lower DIN limit as well. Bindings get heavier and more expensive as the DIN limit increases, so once you figure out your optimal DIN, pick a binding that lands you in the middle to high range of its DIN capabilities for the best results. Wondering where you should mount your bindings? Most ski manufacturers recommend the center of the side cut. Mounting your bindings a few centimeters forward or at true center balances the swing weight. This is beneficial for skiing switch, hitting rails, or hugging cliffs. Unless you intend on getting sendy or doing big mountain comps, it's probably best to stick with factory recommended settings. It's also important to compare brake width on the binding to the width of your ski underfoot. You want a brake width on your binding that's as close to but not less than the width of your ski. Too narrow and they won't engage when your skis come off. Too wide and you could catch a brake with an edge while skiing. All right, let's wrap this up with a few key points. Know where you're skiing, alpine, backcountry, or a mix, and then choose your binding accordingly. If you already own ski boots, make sure the bindings are compatible, check that ISO, and remember to pick bindings suited to your DIN with brakes correctly sized for your skis. Thanks for listening. If you're still stumped on bindings, don't hesitate to connect with a gearhead. Until then, we'll catch you on the next run.